I want to encourage theologians and philo analytic philosophers to be patient with each other as we try to carry on this conversation together. Because I think there's a tremendous amount to be gained from the interaction of the two. And it would be a real shame if that conversation were disrupted or cut short uh, because uh, the various parties to the conversation um, um, find themselves uh, annoyed <laughs> with uh, the idiosyncrasies, uh, the characteristic thought forms of the, of the other party. Um, there's a lot to be gained. I think analytic philosophy can be really helpful. It's been very helpful to me. I really appreciate the analytic philosophers that I have, have read in clarifying concepts in um, introducing distinctions that help uh, disambiguate, to help sort out and clarify what's at stake in a dispute, in thinking through arguments, formulating them carefully, um, putting those arguments to the test, and then offering some novel ideas, uh, new lines of argument. All that, I think, is enormously valuable. And after all, theology and um, Philosophy, as your question, your introduction to the question suggested, have not always been a separate enterprises. They were intimately connected throughout much of the history of uh, religious thought in the West. I mean, thinkers like Augustine, who I've mentioned, and Anselm and Aquinas and, and others, many, many others, um, were philosophical theologians or theologian philosophers. Uh, the two disciplines were thoroughly interwoven. Um, and the kinds of skills that um, philosophers cultivate uh, clearly were anticipated in, for example, scholastic theology, um, which is a very rich source, it seems to me, for contemporary theological reflection. Now, having said all that, there are differences between the, the two uh, traditions. Um, analytic Anglo-American philosophy is, is much younger uh, it has its own particular literature and sources. Some of its history is inimical to religious thought. Uh, and on the theological side, the theological history is, um, goes very, very deep. So it's a vast literature to try to grasp. Uh, and it isn't particularly helpful to pluck out a particular text or idea and subject it to, um, to the you know, tender mercies of, an, of, of analysis without a rich enough appreciation of its context. So I think, I think adjustments need to be made on both sides. Um, the, the, the theological, one of the virtues of, of, of theological reflection is to try to hold together ideas that stand in tension because those ideas reflect important elements of the faith of the community. And theologians, I think, ought to feel an obligation to try to articulate, to speak from the texts and practices and um, um, community life of, 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 of Christians. And that produces a rich and complex texture, which doesn't always lend itself to complete clarity. Um, but nonetheless, so I, I, that has to be, I think that has to be respected. It's important for somebody who wants to bring analytic techniques to bear on theological questions, to pay attention to the history um, uh, and the context within those questions arise. Um, but as I said at the outset, I, I think that kind of analysis can be very helpful. And even if a theologian in the end ends up feeling that some of the nuance of the theological discussion has been missed, nonetheless, a lot can be gained through the conversation. So I've been engaged in this kind of bridge building for 20 plus years. And, and I'm delighted to see conferences like this one, where we're really working at getting theological voices and philosophical voices together uh, to, to think jointly about these compelling 
of religious issues.